Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today we got one system from the user Lion12 in Discord, so a massive thank you to them for sending in their system. And their system is called the D the Kin Devious system. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check this out. So there it is there. Already has a planet on the thumbnail. Let's see what we have got here. Right. Oh, it's taking time to load. That usually means it's something big. Oh, there we go. Right. Let's have a look at this. Oh, wow. Okay. Ooh, interesting. Okay, right. We've got a green star. Colour star. Okay, so the King Devious system is a large anomaly in the known universe. It hosts four stars with a black hole too. It was discovered just outside the uh, Pleiades-like nebula around 23.4 uh, light years away from Sol. So from the sun. Okay. Or 23.4K, so thousand then. Okay, cool. Right, so... Kindevius is a highly massive and bright green star which is the centre of the entire system. The cause for its uh, for being its colour is unknown at this time. Okay, interesting. Like a green star. Very, very cool. Okay, so Indevious, the first of the... Oh, that's the next star. Hang on. So we're, we're going through the stars first. Right, so we've got this one over here. Right, oh yeah. Okay, Indevious, a small and purple star located around 0 0.2 um, apolysis of Apoapsis? Like uh, Candivus, it is unknown as the origin of its coloration. It is in a binary with a brown dwarf star, which is there. Oh, wow, okay. So he's actually made a regular use of regular star for the brown dwarf. Very nice. A brown dwarf star that is in a binary orbit within Devious. It is a spectral class Y and is very similar in mass and size to Indevious, which causes theories that they form together. Cool. Okay. Next up, we've got uh, Del Deldevius, which is... Where is that? Where, where are we? Is it? Aha! So here is the blue star. Hey, hey. Okay. Blue B-class star that is located over one light year from Candivius. So it's pretty far, then. Um, it is around double the mass of the sun and is in a binary orbit with a black hole. And lastly, Bold uh, Boldivius, which is uh, there... Black hole in here, oh yeah, with the colour on it as well, nice. Black hole that is in a binary orbit, it is around one-fourth the mass of the sun. Okay, cool, right, very nice. There's our stars, that's the introduction to the stars. So now going all the way back to the beginning, we need to head to the green star again. So here's a light year away, that is, from here, so that's pretty cool. Right, here we go. So next up we have got uh, this one here. So we've got Ner here, first of the planets. Okay, very cool. Got Moon as well. Get a cool clue spy of that. So, a small rocky well that gets very close to Candivius uh, perhaps, uh, uh, to the point it glows red hot with lava. It once had a very thin atmosphere, but due to solar winds, it has been long since removed. Cool. Cool, cool. Next up, we've got Seldom, which is here. Straight for a gas giant. Okay. A gas giant with an orange and yellow bands, roughly almost double the size of Jupiter. It has a single cold moon, whilst itself is very hot, an average of 180 degrees. It's theorised that um, Ner, so that's the first planet, it was originally moon of this gas giant, ejected by its sister moon, and now sits as an only moon. Okay. So the first planet could have been a moon of this. Right. There's the second moon there. Okay. Cool. Next up, we've got Lunost over here. Oh yes, okay. A Venus-like planet with heavy atmosphere and scorching temperatures. Its orbit intersects Dioid. Okay, so that is a scorching place, isn't it? <sighs> How hot is that sitting at? 2,000 plus, okay. Pretty mad. Okay, next up we've got this one. So this is Dioid. A fairly cool world with a purple coloration and a methane atmosphere. It is theorised that it once had a binary orbit with Lunos due to their similar mass and the fact that their orbital lines intersect almost perfectly. Okay, so speaking of the intersection, let's have a look. Oh yes, yeah, so you can see on this side here, those orbits are pretty much, you know, going across each other multiple times. Okay, very nice. Next up we've got Zren here. A small cold colour or purple coloured body, it is so small that it wasn't discovered until very recently and is considered a dwarf planet. 
Yeah, it's pretty small. Look at that. Kilometers. So kilometers. Yeah, very. That's that's really small. That's like small Saturn moon size there. Uranus moon size. Very, very small. Lot of those. Okay. Next up, we have got uh, Naturis. Naturis over here. Right, here we go. So it's an Earth like world. Very ocean heavy, as we can see. Um, characterized by its heavy ocean coverage and life growing mainly on the poles of the planets. It has a single moon that controls the tides, like here on Earth. 18 degrees, very nice. Good temperature. Okay, stats as well. Good stats there as well. Very nice. And then we got the one moon here. Cool. Next up, we got Urien. So this is this moon here. The only moon that gives the planet tides. The body itself is very orange with frozen oceans on it with no atmosphere. The coloration is theorized to be from iron oxide scattered on the surface of a long ago collision. Cool. Now we've got No Connie over here. Nice gas giant. A blue and green banded gas giant with 39 times the mass of Earth and 8 times the radius of Jupiter. Okay, wow. So, despite nowhere near being as big as a Jupiter, it's way larger in size. Okay. So, um, it has no notable moons. However, the green coloration at the poles leads some scientists to be there are microscopic bioluminescent life in the upper atmosphere. Oh, very cool. And it has no moons. Cool. Next up, we've got this one over here. Your relic. Oh, hello. Okay, ooh. Very mysterious and dark, I like. Okay. A massive body of a helium atmosphere and trace amounts of ammonia, giving it a dark red orange hue. The surface itself is very blue with a large ring surrounding the planet. A large ripple is visible on the surface and is believed to be the due uh, to a very large impact resulting in the ring system. Let's go and find that little uh Oh you can see the uh Oh you can see a crater, alright, yeah, look, that's been smashed into by something massive. Like half, almost half the planets have got a massive impact on it. Yeah, okay. Very cool. And that's the remains of that object. Nice. Right, now we're taking a big jump over here to uh, Delmonus. Very cool. Super Earth planet for very cold um, surface approaching absolute zero. Its atmosphere is helium with a ring system surrounded it due to be what is assumed to be a moon torn away by the planet's Roosh limit. Oh dear. There you go. In the pitch blackness as well. Very nice. And then next up, we have got Cure Tonic. Nice looking gas giant already. I can see on the menu there. It's in obviously complete darkness as well. I guess it's pretty far away. Yeah, 0 0.1 light years from the center. So that's a pretty uh, pretty big distance. A dark and light blue gas giant with three times the mass of Jupiter, hosting two small but non notable moons. It is the final planet orbed in uh, Candivius. So there we go. And then the moons. Quick look at those guys as well. Obviously, both in the darkness. Uh, just about see the colours here due to the background lighting, I think. But there you go. It's pretty dark. Cool. So that's everything around the first star. So where are we heading next? I'm guessing we're going to the purple star now. Let's have a look. We going there? Oh, hang on, it did say what? Well, so that small blue moon, it, I forgot we, has the moon as a description, so Clarin, a small blue moon that has a strange unnatural crater on its surface. It's unclear how it got here, so there isn't any evidence of a collision or geological activity. There's also evidence of a strange item in the middle of the crater, which is yet to be confirmed in origin. Strange energy readings are detectable coming from the crater. So that's this guy here. Let's have a closer look at it then. Any crater visible? Ooh, what's that then? Okay, interesting. Hmm. Obviously, we never would have noticed that in the complete darkness. So good thing you put a description there. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay. And the other moon actually has a description as well. So we got Enust, a small, bright purple moon with a helium atmosphere. It is. Oh, it has many high mountainous areas that appear to be extinct volcanoes. Cool. Right, now moving on, so we've got Denton now, so I believe that was the first one orbiting at the purple star. Over here. There it is, yep, okay. Cool. So, a small and rocky body with highly mountainous terrain. It has small oceans that are incapable of hosting life, along with three small asteroid moons that have bioluminescent life on each of them. Cool. It's also got some uh, small moons as well. Asteroids. Oh, hello. City Light Asteroid. Check that out. 
pretty cool. You can see it's got one of those like glitched atmospheres on it, I think. I saw like a sort of orbit around it. Sure, I saw so. Yeah, look, you can see look, it has some sort of glitched atmosphere on it. It has pretty cool, look. It doesn't show up on the uh, customization, but it is an atmosphere around it. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like those. Then the other two moons, anything over there to look at? Let's have a look. Yeah. So the city lights on this guy as well. Nice. And this one too. Oh, this one has. Yeah. Check that out. Very nice. City lights on those are really cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So that will head to Indilius A. So another little asteroid. A small comet that was captured around 1 million years ago. Simple as that. Uh, now we have Twilight over here. Hey. At all planet with purple magenta foliage. The reason for this coloration is theorized to do with the purple light from the star. However, it is unconfirmed. It also hosts a Hatful moon with green foliage like Earth. Cool. Look at its stats as well. 69 and only one on it. Interesting. And then there's the moon. That was 43 and 0 0.07 there. Cool. So a nice pair of two uh, good looking worlds there. Very nice. So next up we have got Band. A planet with water on both poles but not the equator. This makes for a border of land at the hot equator whilst creating vast and islandless oceans at the poles. Very interesting. Cool. So next up we've got Tundras over here. A frozen planet with icy rings and a very thick atmosphere. It is minus 140 degrees and because of this thick atmosphere and is theorized to have ripped apart its moon and stolen a lot of atmosphere material from it in the process. Interesting, okay. See, it's receiving light from multiple stars as well. Cool. So we've got in and Delius B, taking a big jump over here. It's around the other star now. Another small comet that orbits both in Devious and Hollow Hollowed Vius. Its surface is covered in microscopic bioluminescent life. As oh, so the bioluminescent life, that's what the city lights were on the other ones. Nice. Hmm. Good stuff. Right, next up we have got um, Far Ear. Is that orbiting around this star? Yeah, okay. There you go. A relatively small planet that hosts life, but not the usual kind. The atmosphere has ammonia, but instead of oxygen, it also has liquid ammonia oceans. Um, the planet is an ammonia world that hosts life for ammonia-based life forms. Uh, large caps, ice caps over the poles with sh uh, strange gaseous anomaly in orbit. Not simulated, it gives us a varying energy signals. Okay, that's the planet in the thumbnail, I think. Looks pretty cool in the systems thumbnail up here. That's pretty cool. Nice. Cool. And that's everything. So that's everything around these two stars. So now we're heading to Desdemonus. So I believe that is now around the ultra far away set here. Is it? It is. This planet was once a lush and vibrant Earth flight planet, but due to the atmosphere being blasted away by solar winds, it has been since reduced down to a very thin atmosphere with a sandy and desert like surface. Little ocean remains to the point breathing is near impossible on the surface. It only has a single moon. There it is. Hydronautic. The only moon of Desmos, um, it orbits very close by. It has a vast ocean. This moon was used to evacuate people when uh, Desdemonus lost its atmosphere. It's where people stay to this day. I don't think they've got really escape options nearby either because there's no other planets, I don't think, in this region. It's over a light year away from the other planets in this system, so not good. <laughs> then we got Sekoni. I think that's... Oh, no, there's another second. There is a second planet. So over here... The only other object in this system. A planet roughly the size of Earth with an argon oxygen ammonia atmosphere. It surfs as many shades of blue which gives it a teal coloration, which bioluminescent life flourishing in the cold temperatures. It is believed that this planet could be a candidate for terraforming an Earth like planet in the future too. Very nice. And that is the uh, Kindivius system. Very nice. I like the star structure of having different ones around. That's cool. It's nice and easy to uh, get through as well. Really, really enjoyed that. And then obviously you've got the black hole over here again, all by itself, nothing in orbit of it. So, pretty cool. I like that. That was a good little system, actually. I really enjoyed that. So, there we go. Oh, yeah. Hello. The green star is big compared to everyone else. Oh, it's massive, actually. Look at that. The black hole's all the way down the bottom there, because that isn't very big, is it? Yeah, the black hole's all the way uh, here. One of the smallest bodies in here. Yeah, check that out. It weighs 0.25% the mass of the sun, 25%, so pretty big.
This one has a cool look from behind. Check that out. Hey. Yeah, there we go. There is the lineup. So, well, which one do you guys like the most? I mean, that's a Kai system. I like that gas giant. That's cool. I do like that purple rocky world that we were looking at. That one is pretty awesome. Where would it go? Oh, I've lost it now. Where, where was it? It was further down here, wasn't it? There we go, this one. I like this. That's the coolest rocky planet for sure. I like that one. But yeah, there we are. So that does it for this system. So again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system, Lion12, for sending the system in. Really enjoyed that. Thank you very much. And with that all said and done, guys, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And obviously, of course, make sure to press that like button and subscribe and help us on the journey to 40,000 subscribers if you haven't already. It really helps the channel out and I really, really appreciate it. But yeah, like I said, that all said and done. Make sure you guys all have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.